Title. Veil of Shadows. In the quiet town of Eldermere, the streets whispered of secrets, and the winds carried echoes of the past. At the heart of this town stood an old Victorian house that had once been the pride of its owners, the Harringtons. As time unfurled its relentless fingers, the house fell into disrepair, swallowed by ivy and shadows. It became a point of whispered speculation, some said it was haunted, others claimed it was simply the lingering remnants of sorrow. But for Emily, the Harrington estate was more than just a house, it was a home. Raised by her grandmother, who was the sole survivor of the family's tragic history, Emily had spent countless hours roaming its dim halls and dusty rooms. Yet, as her grandmother's mind began to slip away into the tangled web of dementia, the house began to change, too. The whispers grew louder. Emily found herself waking in the middle of the night to muted conversations drifting through the walls. Shadows danced at the corners of her vision, fleeting figures that vanished before she could truly see them. It was as if the house itself was conjuring the memories of its former inhabitants, each flicker of movement a remnant of their lives, of the laughter and the anguish that had long since faded. As her grandmother's condition worsened, Emily felt the weight of responsibility crashing down on her. She dealt with her grandmother's outbursts of both clarity and confusion, the days when she recognized Emily's face and the nights filled with hysteria as she screamed about the things in the garden. It was during these feverish nights that Emily began to unravel the threads of her own sanity. She, too, began to hear the voices. There here, her grandmother would whisper, her frail hands gripping the bedsheets. They never left. Who? Emily would ask, but her grandmother's gaze would drift to the window, eyes glimmering with conviction yet shrouded in fear. They're watching you, she would reply with a grave certainty. One particularly stormy evening, while the wind howled like a lurking beast, Emily descended into the house's forgotten cellar, a place filled with cobwebs and the musty scent of thyme. It was there that she discovered an old trunk, barely identifiable beneath layers of dust. Inside, she found faded photographs of the Harrington family, a family that had all but vanished into obscurity, alongside newspaper clippings that hinted at their tragic demise, a series of mysterious deaths, accidents, and an overwhelming sense of despair that seemed to untangle in the air around her. In the following days, Emily's nights became plagued with terrors. Each hour she stumbled into a new realm of horror. She glimpsed her grandmother's face morphing into those old photographs, locked in expressions of fear and sorrow. One evening, Emily woke to find herself standing by the window, staring out into the garden where shadows flickered like whispers. She rubbed her eyes, but when she looked again, she felt a chill scrape across her spine. The garden was teeming with dark figures draped in the remnants of the past, their forms blurred and twisted. Determined to protect her grandmother, Emily sought help from the townsfolk who told her of a local historian. The woman, with eyes like black pools, spoke of the Harringtons with an eerie admiration. Their spirits linger, bound by the weight of their tragedies. Your grandmother is the last thread. The house keeps her anchored, feeding off her memories. But as Emily delved deeper, she realized her own grip on reality waned. Visions blurred at the edges, and her mind twisted like the creeping vines outside. The voices grew louder, beguiling her into believing in the narrative laid forth by her ancestors. They invited her to join them, to transcend reality and dwell in the garden of shadows with them, for what is madness but a path to another form of existence. The nights grew darker, and the tempest within Emily escalated. The line between her reality and the whispered truths of the past began to dissolve. On the night of the full moon, the garden summoned her. Compelled, she slipped into the murky depths, the shadows beckoning urging her to abandon her grandmother, to step into twilight where the trapped souls danced between the worlds. But as she reached out, she caught a glimpse of her grandmother, alive, aware, and filled with a profound sorrow. In that moment, Emily felt a pang of clarity, a surge of hope for the bond they shared. I won't leave you, she gasped, tears streaming down her cheeks. We're still here, together. With that declaration, the shadows shrieked in fury as the garden burst into a tempest of rage. In one final illumination, the house trembled and the darkness shrank back, revealing the warm golden light of dawn. The whispers faded, and the haunting figures dissolved into the air. Emily awoke in the cool light of morning, back in her grandmother's room. She turned to find her grandmother awake, 
her mind still caught in the throes of dementia but sparkled with fleeting clarity that morning. You came back, my dear, her grandmother murmured, a hint of understanding lighting her eyes. Emily smiled, the sacrifices of the night echoing in her heart. Together, they would navigate the veiled complexities of memory and loss. The house had nearly claimed her, but with love as their anchor, they could keep the shadows at bay. Mind by mind, moment by moment, they could rewrite their story, one where darkness could not overpower the bond of family and the strength of human spirit.